Um, so this is, uh, uh, you saw the physical demo of this last week. And what we are looking at now, and this is the sort of the typical experimental setup. Um, so when you have lasers, it's a lot easier to do. So you saw the demonstration with just a laser and a, a single double slit uh, last time. And you will have a whole lab to work with this on Thursday, so I won't spend more time on that. But historically, the way people did experiment was, first you have a single slit so that you have a single source of light, so that light arriving here and here would be in phase. And these two now work as um, two, in the, um, two sources of light that start out in phase. And depending on which location the light ends up at, they would either be in phase or be out of phase, and you have many of these um, uh, dark fringes. So, so this is actual practical experimental setup that you may see, except your lab will be better because you're still using lasers. You won't need the initial single slit. Um, let's see. Um, so, wow, this picture is still complicated. I, okay, <laughs> so this is the figure I want you to think about when you are conceptually considering, um, concept, oops, that's wrong. When you're conceptually considering Young's double slit experiment. So you have a source of light that starts out. So you could say at, um, you could say that uh, at this location, you can describe light uh, this way. Um, you can describe the light with its electric field. This sounds okay to everyone? You can describe light with its electric field. So you could say here, the, the not magnitude, the amp amplitude, um, the yeah, amplitude of the electric field is some, si some um, no, amplitude is not right either. Well, electric field, uh, electric field, um, just the component, not the vector quantity, just the component as a function of time is the amplitude times cosine of omega t. And I can say that because I'm describing the electric field at a particular point in space. So if I'm defining my axis this way, x and y, then it would be the electric field at x equals 0, and let's say uh, y is equal to 0 here. So at y equals, I don't know, plus d over 2. Good. Yes. And the electric field here, I could describe it as, um, so this is electric field one, electric field two. And electric field here, I could describe this as the same amplitude. As if we, uh, assuming the intensity here and here are the, are the same, the amplitude of electric field would be the same also. Times cosine of omega t, that's uh, what we mean, these two are in phase. They have the same phase as they are coming out of this slit. And this would be at x equals 0 and y equals minus d over 2. Yep. And you know, if you want to make it overcomplicated, you could describe the electric field at all locations in space. Anywhere the light can reach, you can describe the optical electric field. But let's make it simple for ourselves. We want to uh, not overcomplicate it. Make it simple. Only this, we only concern ourselves what does the pattern of light look like at some distance L away. So we are only looking at the electric field at x equals L. But what it will be now is it will be a function of y. So. So let me draw the y-axis here. So y is equal to 0 here. So this is 0. And at these different locations, I can describe what is the electric field as a function of y, um, what is the elec total electric field as a, function of, as a function of y and time. That makes sense? OK. So I'll tell you now that as a function of time, it's going to be kind of boring. 
it's going to be um, like cosine of omega t. Right? El electric field is just going to oscillate at whatever frequency it oscillates at. Um, now, if that's true, when you look at the light like this, do you look, does it look like anything's oscillating here? Not really, right? And, uh, actually, this one, um, oh, I guess with the new battery, it doesn't do that. <laughs> actually, there is something oscillating here. You, your eye just can't see. So um, something that's uh, um, good to get used to quickly is that the light, the electromagnetic wave, it oscillates really quickly. The frequency of light, um, so optical frequency, it's a somewhere from 10 to the 14 to 10 to the 15 hertz. Do you have some sense of how big these frequencies are? Like a million gigahertz or terahertz? Um, do you know what the highest frequency is that you can uh, visibly see with your own eyes that they are oscillating? It's flickering. About 10 hertz? 10 40 hertz, maybe. Anybody here know, a, anyone here know film, vid, uh, videos? 24. So 24 frames per second is the videos that you normally watch, and your persistence of vision is enough that it looks smooth. So uh, 24, so it, that would be what? Oh, frames per second, that is hertz. So when something is freely occurring at 24 hertz, you actually can't see it. These light, well, I'm not sure about the fluorescent light. When you look at incandescent sunlight, actually, some of the lights, they flicker at like 120 hertz, but your eyes won't see it. So the thing to, to get used to is that most of the time, when you are looking at intensity of light, you are going to look, be looking at a time averaged quantity. So here, the electric field here, yes, it is a function of time. But in the end, we don't really care about um, what it is a function of, um, we, don't, uh, we don't really care about the time dependence because it's going to average out. So, um, so what we really care about here is um, some kind of, uh, um, some kind of, uh, let me not write down the mathematical expression. I think it's gonna, I mean, let me write it down but not bring too much attention to it. What you're going to be looking at here is you want the intensity um, as a function of y position and what that'll look like is it'll be proportional to the time average. So time going from some zero to t, one over t. And what you want to average is actually not the electric field but the electric field absolute value squared. Something like that. Um, uh, if, uh, I, I will skip over that for now. <laughs> so, so what you really want to look at is, um, so the simplified version, we don't really care what the total electric field looks like as a function of time, because that's going to be boring. What we care about is how the total electric field look like as a function of y distance as a function of position. Yeah. So let's uh, just to get a quick sense of um, where people are. Um, so it's a question of, as you, so as the light travels, let, let's uh, look at an easy point first. Let's say, look at the point here. So um, at, after light goes through here, it's a wave that travels in many different directions simultaneously. So we are really looking at this wave as it's traveling to this single point. I'm not saying that it travels only to that point, but I'm only concerned with the, um, the kind, I'm only concerned with what happens to the wave as it's traveling along this line. There's a wave traveling elsewhere, I'm ignoring that for now. So what happens to the electric field as uh, you, or what happens to the electromagnetic wave as it travels along this line? It, it's like a wave. There's a like sinusoidal wave. As a reminder, the electromagnetic wave, um, so I guess 
the wave representation of this electric field would look like E naught times cosine of, there's this omega t, but it's uh, um, it omega t uh, minus kx, or I usually write the kx minus omega t, right? So if you imagine freezing the time, then it would look like some sort of wavy thing that appears here. And what that means is, um, as the um, as you look at different points here, the the phase of the wave will change. It'll start from zero phase to um, zero to 180, 360, and so on. It does that many countless number of times, and when it reaches here, it has a particular phase, and as a relative phase from the starting point to here, would that relative phase depend on time? Let's say at this snapshot in time, it starts out here, and for the sake of argument, let's just say it ends here. So that would be the phase difference of, let's see, uh, 180 plus 90, so 270 degrees, or something like that. If you looked at it at a, some later point in time, will this uh, phase difference still be 270 degrees? Yes. Yeah, yeah. And that's an uh, important thing to note right now as we make this more complicated. Because at some later point in time, imagine this wave moved on, so that it starts out from here, and at that time the wave will have moved on here too, so that it ends like this and the difference will still be 270 degrees. That even though when you look at the phase of the wave here, it'll be changing, the phase difference from here will remain stable, ideally, okay? Um, now what I want to do, so this is the phase difference from slit one to screen. And, um, and what I want to consider now is the phase for the electric field that's arriving from the other slit. So for the electric field that's arriving from the other slit, it, this does the same thing. It starts out in phase, so goes like this. Um, so I, when, I, when, after, when I draw it, I'm gonna mess it up. So before I finish drawing, let me ask. Um, if uh, it starts out phase of zero here, what phase will this light arrive uh, at here? <coughs> Should be the same as the slit one, right? So when you look at this, it should, let me just try to draw it right. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> Knew I wasn't gonna draw it right. So this was phase one, the phase two would also be 270 degrees. So these two waves started out in phase and they end up in phase on the screen. Let me ask you this question. Are these two waves always in phase everywhere on the screen? No, right? You saw with uh, this double solid experiment last time you saw with, the do with the, this double slit thing, uh, you can't really see. Uh, yeah, especially, let's see, if I do it farther away, maybe you can see, yeah. You saw with the, this double slit thing that you do see dark fringes. That's where you get destructive interference. So you know that they are not always in phase on the screen. They do go out of phase. So what would cause electric, electromagnetic wave from one slit to go out of phase with electromagnetic wave from the other slit. Like what would, uh, could introduce this phase difference? They, travel different, uh, they can travel different amount of distance. So this point is actually special. This is the midpoint. So it's at the exact same amount of distance from either two slit. Because you see the change in phase as things go travel over space, right? So the way this point, we, by the way, we call that point so that you have the language to describe this in. Um, this is the point where we call something, where something that we call central maximum happens. And the thing that's special about the central maximum is um, that's the point that's at exactly same distance from either of the two slits. So, um, so that's where they have to be in phase. Now, as you consider different points on the screen, 
they won't necessarily be at the same distance.